It is time. We're building the MPC in C. I actually had one more video planned to go up before I started on this build, but Adobe kind of didn't want that to happen. But well, anyways, we're going to build the MPC in C together, like with Dolly, the Prusa Mark II uh, clone. Uh, but unlike that, this one is going to be the real deal. A full MPC and C in the Burley version, which is uh, the current sturdier design variant. In this video, I just want to go over the parts that I'm using, why I'm using them, and what alternatives and advantages to the parts that I'm using are. But first, what even is the MPC and C? As a full explainer, check out my interview with the MPC and C's designer from Murph 2018 up here. But basically, this is a closed source 3D printable, where it makes sense, CNC router engraver. Um, let's just call it a light duty CNC. The base is any sheet of flat material that you want to use. Um, the frame and linear rails are steel tubing. And if you, <laughs> if you have it available, you can use electrical conduit. The motion is just done with six millimeter GT2 belt and NEMA 17 motors just like, you know, with a 3D printer, and it also uses a 3D printer control board. And, you know, any board you have will basically work. And of course, there's the tool head. I'm using a spindle, but you can, of course, also use a 3D printing head with an extruder and a potent or a pen plotter, a drag knife, paste extruder, whatever you want. It's just a motion platform, right? The nice thing is that you can easily scale the machine by using a larger base and longer tubing and belts. I'm building mine with a roughly 50 by 50 centimeter build area and 15 or 20 centimeters of vertical travel. But you know, you can always adjust the offset that that travel is going to have so that it's going to stay reasonably rigid. I'm not exactly sure how large the actual usable build area is going to be once you add uh, fixtures, the tool and so on, but it should be comfortably large in either case. So, you know, looking at these parts, it should be obvious that this is not a machine that will be massively rigid and end up cutting stainless steel or titanium. At best, I'm hoping for some drilling and light cutting in aluminum, but I think this machine is much more comfortable cutting or engraving uh, wood, plastics, foams, those sort of softer materials. But parts. Let's start with the printed parts. These were printed from Simple PLA which is rigid and strong, uh, exactly what you want out of a CNC frame. Unlike the topology optimized shelves, there are screw heads actually pressing against these parts and potentially hot components like uh, the spindle touching the prints, so I'll have to see how well these hold up. I can always reprint them out of PTG or ASA or something. These parts were printed on a bunch of different printers with a bunch of different PLAs and I don't know, the, the color scheme is... Uh, definitely disagreeable, but overall this is one and a half kilograms of filament, two small spools, so it's it's quite a bit of material, but these parts are designed to be quite chunky, so you don't need to use your fanciest filament for this. In fact, I used random bits of old PLA that I had hanging around, so yeah, excuse the color scheme. The set of parts is the Burley set from V1 Engineering, and I've also printed a mount for my spindle, that's this one. Uh, I believe that is off of Thingiverse. There is a healthy ecosystem of modified parts available already. And speaking of the spindle, maybe calling this thing a spindle is a bit much, but that's what the seller is calling it. I've used a similar one in the Mendel Max CNC conversion, but this is a brushless version of that motor with a chuck assembly. I'm hoping that the controller might be a bit smarter and give more consistent torque over the RPM range. For the brushed version, the only sort of RPM control is by adjusting uh, the power supply voltage, but this one has this controller that includes not just a means to adjust RPM, but it also has a digital readout that displays RPM in real time. And I think that's a huge deal when it comes to tuning in cutting parameters. It just takes all the guesswork out. This one only goes up to 12,000 RPM, which is not a whole lot. So you can also use a trim router as I've got in Bob, the CNC CNC router, but I find that to be a pretty horrible option as they tend to be super noisy. And in my case with that Makita router, getting collets for the thing turned out to be an absolute nightmare. So I could only really use six millimeter shaft end mills, which is actually really large for how 
non-rigid these small machines are. These smaller motors just have an ER11 chuck and the collets for those are incredibly cheap and available everywhere. Uh, it's just a standard size of collet. Next up, the frame. For the base, I use this particle board that I glued some MDF onto. I like the smooth and flat surface of MDF, uh, but you could also just use a solid thicker piece of MDF uh, or plywood or an old kitchen countertop, really. As long as it's flat and somewhat rigid and you can screw things to it, you should be fine. You could probably even use a T-slot table made out of aluminum. That way you directly have a way to clamp things down. Uh, for me here, I will have to screw things directly into the MDF. We'll see how well that goes. These tubes double up as both the frame and the linear rail. So it's a really good idea to use something that is fairly rigid. The MPC and C files are available for 23.5, 25 and 25.4 millimeters, AKA one inch tubing, which I believe may be fairly common sizes in the greatest country of the world. But for me, I could really only get hold of this 25 millimeter tubing. This really is just standard tubing stock. I ended up using this ground stainless version, which is more expensive than conduit would be, but not unreasonably pricey by any means. The sizes that would be relatively easily available here uh, are for things like galvanized water pipe, which comes in nominal half inch and three quarter inch, which actually is 21.3 and 26.9 millimeters on the outside. Don't ask me how those sizes make sense, but maybe we'll see an MPC and C version that supports one of those sizes at some point. Now, for the motion system, I grabbed some random NEMA 17s, as well as a fresh roll or fresh pack uh, of GT2 2M 6mm glass fiber belt. Same stuff that's used on 3D printers. Interestingly, V1 say you shouldn't use uh, this steel reinforced belt, so I'm not doing that. Even though, theoretically, I guess it should be a bit more rigid. But then again, there's also a huge difference between just using the cheapest GT2 belt and some brand name stuff just in rigidity. For electronics, I'm using the Duet Wi-Fi for now. It has strong drivers and great software, but I may swap it out for something simpler at some point, as I might need it back in my Mendel 9000 test platform, which, yes, this thing is finally printing. It should be a fairly easy configuration swap moving the board between machines. Right now, it's still installed in there, so I'm gonna have to tear it out and then, I don't know, do something with it. One last thing that you're gonna need a bunch of is fasteners. Um, you can use both metric or imperial sized hardware, but the parts are designed with imperial parts in mind as far as I'm aware. Oh, and you, you do need a lead screw and a coupler and pulleys, but that's all super unexciting stuff that you kind of need for every build like this. The same goes for tools. You need a few basic things like hex keys and maybe a few spanners for nuts. And I believe you also need a way to drill a few holes into these tubes for the Z-axis. But for example, the base, you can get cut at pretty much any home center in any size. Now you can buy all these parts, minus the tubing and the base, I believe, directly from V1 Engineering. But of course, there's also the option to self-source, which I did, and ended up a bit cheaper than what the kit would have cost. Of course, which option is better for you depends on where you live and what your preferences are in self-sourcing versus buying a kit. But just like with Dolly, I've created a full list of parts over on toms3d.org with options of where to get each part. So over the next days, I'll be building this MPC and C together with all of you in a series of live streams. Uh, the first one will start tomorrow on Sunday, August 25th, 2019. So if you're free, come join in and maybe even build along. The link to that is in the description below so that you can enable those notifications. But these streams will also be available as recordings for your enjoyment. Uh, the great thing is you can skip forward in recordings. So I hope to see you there. As always, uh, thank you for watching. Leave the video a like, get subscribed, or even support the channel through YouTube memberships or Patreon. And I'll see you then. Bye.